How's it going ladies and gentlemen? I've got a few toe tips that I want to share with you today and today I'm going to focus specifically on one. Um, just recently I just went camping with my family in this 06 Ram 2500 with the 5.9 Cummins in it, 48 RE, automatic transmission and we towed our camper down there. Uh, it's about a seven or 8,000 pound camper plus all of our stuff so it's going to be a little bit more weight. So not the heaviest camper on the market, not the lightest, it's not a fifth wheel, it's a tag along but it's a tandem axle camper, has a little weight to it. And we went 630 miles each way to camp and we were smooth sailing, cruising down the road, 70 miles an hour with the cruise set, had no problems at all. And you're probably like 70 miles an hour, big deal, man. Like I can go 80 in my truck towing. Well, we're gonna talk about that and we're gonna talk about why I didn't do that. So this is, one of the things that I want to share with you on this toe tip, one of the things that can prevent you from breaking down when you go out towing is the proper tires on your truck. Nothing fancy, right? Like, what are you talking about, man? The proper tires and tire pressure on your truck and also on your camper. And I got a little burn there because I just pulled the truck up here. Um, Tires popping on the side of the road on your camper, mainly on your camper, is probably one of the biggest things that puts people down on the side of the road. So you want to be prepared before you take any trips with your family in your truck because none of us want to break down. We're going on vacation. We want to mentally relax, have a good time. And the last thing we want to do is have an inconvenience, throw us off schedule and have a pop tire. And I'll tell you, I've gone on vacation where I've had a six hour drive and had to catch a ferry um, with my truck and my trailer to get to an island for us to camp on. And your ferry time is when it is and you're either there or you're not. And a pop tire probably means you're gonna miss that boat, literally. No fun for you, no fun for your family. So let's get down to business. As far as tires go, they apply to basically any truck. 1500, 2500, 3500, it's all, it's all the same basically. The only thing that'll be different will be whatever size tire the truck calls for. Gas engine, diesel engine, all the same shoot and match. So this particular truck here, 2500, has LT 265-7017s on it and you're gonna see on here it says you see that load range e so lt stands for light truck 265 70 17 and then the load range is basically how much weight the tire can hold so we don't even know let's say you just bought the truck and you want to find out if you got the factory tires on it how do you figure that out that's a great question i'm going to answer that for you so you can go on here and you can look right there and you'll see your tire sizes that are on your door jam, all right? So they'll be there and you can look and compare and find out. So you wanna run the factory tires that your truck came with. A lot of people um, will lift their trucks and they'll raise them up off the ground. And I'm gonna talk to you about that. I'm not a hater on lifted trucks and all that kind of stuff, but there's applications for everything and you need to be aware of it. And then you need to take that into consideration. Maybe you do have a camper and you wanna lift your truck, but you're gonna go and camp here and there. You gotta figure out what's best for you. So we'll talk about that. Load range E, for instance, is set on here, load range E. Why are we talking about load range E? Well, that's the particular load rating of the tire. Load range E, it's a 10 ply tire, which is important. A lot of people talk about plies, and it'll talk to you, it'll tell you about the max load single right there. There's your weight, 3,195 pounds, safety warning, and then they tell you the tire pressure right here, 80 PSI. So you don't have to put it at 80 if you don't want to. Um, one thing I'll share with you is the more air you put in the tire, the stiffer your ride is going to be because when you're going over bumps and things like that, the sidewall of the tire is not going to be able to absorb the bumps as much. Your suspension will have to do it. So I normally run about 65 PSI cold, and then when I'm towing, it'll pump up to, it'll, it'll, the tire pressure will increase to about 70 PSI or so. And the reason being is, is when that air inside that tire gets warm, the air molecules rub together and, you, and they create heat. And when, when temperature increases, so does pressure. So then you'll go from 75, 80 PSI or so. So, the rooster over there is being noisy today, I'm sorry. So, 
tires, you want to run your factory size if you're going to be doing a lot of towing with your camper or with whatever it is that you're towing. Now, let's talk about why that is. Well, if you put a bigger tire on here, like you're lifted super high off the ground and you got a bigger tire on there, these engines are very strong, the diesels are, and they can turn the bigger tires. Um, even the Hemis are very strong and they can turn the bigger tires. But with the bigger tires, you're going to have a lot more rolling resistance because the tire is physically heavier. So it's going to be a stronger load on your rear end, on your transmission, and on your engine. So what that end result means is your, your rate in which you put wear on your rear end, your transmission, your engine, your transfer case, your front axle, your drivetrain is probably going to increase some compared to having factory stock tires and wheels on your truck. Where you're going to notice it first and foremost is instantly is going to be at the fuel pump. If you've got heavier tires on your truck because they're bigger, it's going to take more fuel and more power to turn those wheels. So what that means is more fuel going into the cylinders to create the same power that was needed before well it's actually going to be more power to turn those wheels the same speed as before so going 65 miles an hour down the road with these tires versus way bigger tires it's going to take way more fuel and it's going to be a lot harder for your truck to accelerate uh, with the bigger tires on there when compared to your factory oem tires you'll have a much easier time pulling off a light accelerating uh, you're going 65 70 miles an hour down the road with the cruise set pulling a hill your engine will have a much easier time Sustaining and maintaining that speed and not having to drop a gear pulling that hill with your factory tire size versus the bigger tires The bigger tires are going to be more of a strain on your engine And it's going to have to work a whole lot harder to be able to turn those tires and then when you give the added load on your truck You're going to be burning some fuel. So I want to come down here to the camper talk to you about camper tires you can see the setup I got here one of the things that I wanted to share with you um, that I noticed when we went on this 630 or 50 mile ride each way towing this camper is I was I said earlier in the video I would talk to you about why I was going 70 miles an hour down the road and why I wasn't going any faster you know everybody wants to roll down the highway in the left lane or in the right lane right I can't even talk right lane maintaining speed with traffic like they're not towing a camper you know, a lot of people want to do that 75 and a 70, 80 and a 70 with the camper. And, you know, look at me, I'm rolling. Um, I'm free. I'm, I'm on vacation. I'm having a good time. But let me tell you what you need to pay attention to. Your camper tires, you need to take a look at. Okay. And this one says right on here, speed rating, 75 mile per hour. It's upside down, but that's what it says, max. So that means, th these are the tires that came on this camper. So that means that these tires can only sustain highway speeds of 75 miles an hour at the most, and that's it. Anything faster than that is gonna be too much for the tire, and you could potentially overheat the tire, blow a bell, and pop it, and then you're gonna be on the side of the road using your spare. So the best thing to do is to just go 65, 70 in the right lane, set your cruise, save fuel, let your camper do its thing. When, when I did go on this trip, I saw so many people in the left lane that passed me like I wasn't even moving. And I said to myself, I really hope that they don't go down. And they did. I would say probably over half the people I saw went by me, half hour, hour up the road, they were on the side of the road and they had a pop tire on their camper. And the reason being is because they probably didn't know that there was speed ratings on their tires. The other thing that they probably didn't know is you want to inspect your tires, the sidewalls, for cracking, any kind of drywall cracks, you're going to want to replace the tires. Obviously, if your tire tread is completely gone, you need to replace the tires. Same thing here, you want to check the tire pressure. So these tires will also tell you where your tire pressure needs to be. So it's gonna tell you, yeah, right here, 65 PSI cold. So not driving down the road, they want you to put at 65 PSI. 
same rules apply to this. You um, put the tire pressure super high, um, 65 or whatever, you know, the more air you put in it, the st stiffer it's gonna be, the less give the tire's gonna have on the road, and the more your suspension on your camper will have to absorb all of those bumps and stuff. So I think I ran these at 55 cold and they aired up to about 60 when it was, after we were rolling down the road and it was warm. So that seemed to be okay. Um, one of the things that I do for storage, you'll notice when we walked up here, we had these covers on here. I got those pretty cheap, and if people want the links to these, I can post them for you in the comments and you can get yours. These are 15 inch tires, so I bought a set of these fairly cheap. They're definitely worth their weight in gold because if I stored my tires like this all summer long, this, the sun over time would dry the rubber out and it would begin to crack and I would have to buy tires. But I put these on there and I'm okay. Um, it covers up the tire, it protects it, it keeps the sun off of it, it's in the shade, and it and it it maintains the tire so when we do go camping, I can take those off, check the tire pressure, and roll. Another tip that I have for you for tire maintenance that you can do to your camper is <coughs> tire shine on the side. Sounds crazy, but when you put tire shine on the side of the tires, and I can post the particular tire shine I put on here, but when you put tire shine on the tires on the sidewalls, it definitely soaks into the rubber and keeps the rubber somewhat moist and it protects the rubber and prevents it from dry rotting. So I'll put tire shine on the tires and then I'll put these covers on to protect the side walls and the whole tire while I'm storing it. And it's normally good for the summer. So all of this being said, when I went to go camping on this last trip, 650 miles, and I wanted to check all my tires to make sure everything was in good pristine condition to avoid a blowout on the side of the road. I checked my tire pressure on my truck. I performed a visual inspection. I did the same thing on the camper and throughout the summer I kept these tire protectors on there. Take five minutes every few months. You could do more if you want to. Put a little tire shine on the tires and I put these covers on there to protect the tires. Before I go camping I check all the tires to check the pressure. If any tire pressure is low, there's a possibility that you have a leak and you're gonna to wanna to identify what that leak is. So I, I recommend checking for leaks maybe a week before you go. So if you got three tires that are say all at 55 or 60 PSI and you got one tire that's at 40, you got a leak. You don't wanna just put air in it and say, oh, it's just a little bit low. Um, you probably have a leak, so you wanna take it off and check it. Um, I can post a video on how to spray your tires down and check them for leaks right on the camper safely, easily. Anybody can do it. Just let me know. But ladies and gentlemen, that's what I want to share with you today. The biggest thing I can tell you is you do all these checks to make sure your tires are good. You get on the highway and you stay within the max speed rating of your camper tires. Don't go over it. And remember, the faster you go, the more of an opportunity that you'll have to potentially get into an accident. One of the greatest things that I learned this time when I went out, I was going 65, 70 when I was towing in the right lane, the speed limit 70. Everybody was in the left lane going by me. They were rolling. So what that meant for me, a ton of following distance up in the front of my truck. And that will be a tip, or another tip that I'll share with you in the future is about following distance and how that could save you, your family, and other people out on the road when you have a lot of following distance in front of your truck. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up in the comments or leave me a comment if you could. Thank you everyone.